So this may be a short video, but I wanted to do a quick update on the vivarium I built about four months ago for my crested gecko Morgan. Morgan's around four years old now, and I've had him since he was a baby, and in that time I've had him in four different enclosures. The reason for this is because I was never completely happy with any of the enclosures I made for him, but I think I finally got it right. About four months ago, I built this new vivarium for Morgan. If you didn't see that video, you might want to watch that before watching this one, so I'll put a link to it here in the corner. And that's because I did an experiment with how I grew moss in this vivarium. And today I'm showing you the results of that experiment. Basically, I made a mixture of chopped up moss and yogurt and painted it all over the wood. I wasn't sure if that would even work at all. When the vivarium cycled, it made the most incredible bloom of mold. But then that ran its course, and eventually I was surprised to see little moss sprouts on the wood. And look at this vivarium now. Four months later, the plants are growing in great, and the wood is covered with a thick and luscious carpet of moss. I've grown moss in vivariums for so many years, but always moss that was field collected and replanted into the vivarium. And there's something so different about this moss. It wasn't transplanted, but decided that the conditions were right and chose to grow there. This moss isn't just attached to the wood, it's grown from the wood and it's become part of it. And it's so bright and healthy. It's definitely different in the vivarium than even the best transplanted moss. I'll for sure be looking deeper into this technique for growing moss the next time I build a new vivarium. And Morgan has been really happy in here too. I had originally put in a pitcher plant, but I ended up taking it out and replacing it with these ZZ plants because the pitcher plant was just way too fragile for Morgan to make any use of it. But he climbs these ZZ plants and the Hoya vines like they're just his own special ladders. The jewel orchids are loving it in here too, and I'm surprised Morgan hasn't done more damage to those. It might be that Morgan climbs on them all the time and they're tougher plants than I had thought. There's a ledge that runs along the back on the top of the bark on the background, and that's where Morgan goes when he needs to sleep or hide. I didn't build it that way on purpose, but it turned out to be a perfect spot for him. And when he's not doing that, he's all over the vivarium. Morgan has a feeding ledge, but sometimes he prefers eating his food on the ground. And he's done that since he was a baby. He knows the feeding schedule, and even though he won't tolerate being handled, when it's time for him to eat, he often goes to the bottom corner and sits there waiting for me to put his food down. This has turned out to be one of my favorite vivariums, and it's been a great home for such a beautiful gecko. So before I finish out this video, I also wanted to take a minute to thank my son, Jack, and tell him how much I appreciate him. I've come to rely on Jack to take care of the reptile room whenever I have to be away, and he always does a great job. I can actually go on a trip and not worry about the animals at all. And I've promised my wife and kids that I'd keep them out of videos, but I'm going to stick Jack in this one a little bit. I've talked about how I haven't been uploading videos as often as usual. Well, Jack's been home for a while before he leaves to do a study abroad semester in Greece. So I've been trying to spend a lot of time with him, and that's been great. Jack's really attentive to take care of anything that any of the animals in the reptile room needs. 
He'd even be fine to go into a snake's enclosure to change their water or clean messes, but he never really handled them or got to know them. So I told Jack that in case there could be an emergency, I need someone else to also be comfortable handling the snakes and be able to take them in and out of their enclosures. So I want him to learn that. And Jack and I have been spending lots of time together handling the snakes and talking about how to read their body language. And Jack's really good at reading them. I've learned that Jack is a snake whisperer. He has a really good way with them, and the snakes respond to Jack with a level of ease and trust like he's been doing that for years. And once Jack started spending more time handling the snakes and the leopard geckos and getting to know them more personally, it all changed for him. He sees them in a completely different way now, especially the snakes. I can't even tell you as a father how happy it made me when Jack said, I'm really enjoying getting to know all the snakes and I'm becoming attached to them. And it doesn't matter to me one way or another if any of my children want to have their own reptiles someday. That's their path to figure out. But I'm so, so happy that Jack has at least been able to experience the snakes for what they really are and to know them as individuals and to love them as individuals. At this point, I'd be really surprised if Jack doesn't decide that he wants his own snake at some point. But I'm just excited to watch what happens as Jack develops even stronger bonds with all of the snakes here in the reptile room. Anyway, that's just some of what's been going on here and so much more that I can't wait to show you. Even a new member of the family for you to meet. So stay tuned and take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. You are my baby. <laughs> you are my baby. Hi. I'm here. <laughs>